Wildlife researchers in the Amazon have found the world's loudest bird. It is the white bell bird, and its decibel level is equivalent to a loud rock concert or a turboprop plane taking off. Mario Cohen Haft is one of the scientists that measured the call and, of course, has heard it in the wild. He joins us now from Williamsburg in the US state of Massachusetts. Hi, Mario. Thanks so much for being with us. So late your time. Now, first things first, let's uh, hear from the white bellbird. So there it is, sounding like an industrial um, klaxon. But Mario, what's that like to hear when it's at full volume? Well, luckily, we don't get so close to it that it can actually hurt our ears. You usually hear it from about 50 or 100 feet away. And it, at that distance, it's really quite musical and really uh, rather charming. How do you know how loud it is then close up? So we have to use rather fancy equipment that enables you that has a standardized uh, measurement of sound and then you have to calculate the effect of distance. So why is it so loud? What, what's the reason it has developed that call? Oh, we've lost Mario, I believe. We'll try and get back to him there. It's in uh, the US state of Massachusetts. Uh, Mario talking about uh, the loudest uh, bird uh, Mario, one of the scientists that's actually measured the call. Um, Mario, you're talking about why the uh, white bellbird has developed this ability to, to make this incredibly loud call. Well, we believe that um, doing something that's so intrinsically uh, potentially dangerous, that is making a really loud sound that calls attention to itself, uh, has no benefit to survival of the animal must be uh, subject the result of, of, of sexual selection, preference of the female. So it's the male bird that makes the sound? The male bird makes the sound, and we believe that the females like them to sing as absolutely loud as they possibly can. So how do they cope with that, with the male producing that volume right next to them? Well, we, we're not sure how either the male that's singing can endure the, this, the volume of his own sound, let alone how the female can stand it. So that's something we hope to study in the future. Do they have some sort of hearing protection? But apparently that's what she likes. <laughs> Takes all sorts, I guess. So looking at the physiology of this, how do those, they look pretty small, those little birds manage to produce a noise that is so loud? Well, it's really remarkable. It's a bird about the size of a pigeon that has a very large mouth, and that certainly helps to project the sound. It has a very loud, large syrinx, which is the voice box, which also no doubt helps. But they also have incredibly tough abdominal muscles and thick rib cage that presumably helps to keep it all together, and so it doesn't blow a gasket when it belches out that sound. So we've made the right comparisons, have we? It is as loud as a, a loud rock concert or a small plane taking off. That's right, louder than a jackhammer and something equivalent to a pile driver in the number of decibels it produces. So how uh, often do you get to go to the um, Amazon Mario? And I understand you've guided some pretty famous people through the region in your time. I, I live in the Amazon, in the city of Manaus, Brazil, and work for a, uh, a Brazilian research institute. So I'm there all the time and try to do as many expeditions to remote places as possible. These mountains are especially attractive and interesting. And you've shown the likes of Bill Gates and Peter Gabriel around, I understand. That's true. It's quite a privilege to have been able to walk around the woods with folks like that. So nice to talk to you. Thank you very much for joining us uh, at the late hour that it is uh, your end, Mario Kornhoft. Thank you. Thank you. It was a privilege.